So in our circuit design, we will use transistor pairs to design these multi vibrators. Okay, the first one is a stable multi vibrator circuit design by using transistors. We will see now. Uh, this is the plan or agenda for this circuit design, uh, or at least for this topic. Uh, the first one we will see the definition and the design components. This is the common one for all the multi vibrators. The second one we will see the circuit construction or circuit configuration. How can we build the circuit? And also we will see the circuit operation. So how it works. And then of course we have to see the output waveforms, input and output waveforms, and some formulas related to these multi vibrators. So we need to calculate the frequency of oscillation in this multi vibrator. Remember, we had seen oscillators. Oscillators are producing sinusoidal output. Sinusoidal means this is like this. And these multi vibrator multi vibrators are producing non sinusoidal signals. For example, square wave. So that is the difference. So this is also kind of oscillating. It's uh, the output is oscillating from one to zero. 0 to 1. So, so now we have to put the reference level here. This is the 0. In this example, this is 0 0.5. Anyway, so this these multi vibrators are producing non sinusoidal waveforms. So we will see the waveforms and then formulas. And then we will see the applications of a stable multi vibrators where we can use these multi vibrators. Just a brief uh, overview. First, so this is the basic configuration of any multi vibrator. So, what you can see here, so it has some basic building blocks basic building blocks A1, A2, coupling network one, coupling network two. And of course, we are giving trigger, and then the output we get from this amplifier stage one. We can also get another output from amplifier stage two. So, amplifiers A1 and A2, these two are amplifiers. So as I already mentioned, these amplifiers can be either operational amplifier or transistor pairs or triple five timer IC. Okay, so amplifiers A1 and A2, each stage is providing 180 degree phase shift. We know that we must need to satisfy Burkhausen criterion in order to produce the oscillations. So this one is producing 180 degree and this one is producing 180 degree phase shift. So at the output, we get 360 degree phase shift. So the output is not changing the phase with respect to the input. Okay, here the input is uh, thermal noise. Okay, let us say. Um, so now the usage or the purpose of the amplifiers are providing the phase shift and also it's providing amplification gain. So, of course, we are satisfying this percussion criterion. So, there is these two stages, A1 and A2. And here, you can see here, A1 and A2, these two amplifiers are coupled with, are connected via coupling network. So, here we have one coupling network. It's connecting A1 and A2. And we also have another coupling network that is connecting the feedback path. So we are taking fraction of output and then feeding back to the input via this coupling network. Okay, so what is coupling network? Coupling network is nothing but a combination of R and C network. This is just like a, some kind of resistors and capacitors combination network. This is we call simply as a coupling network. Okay, so when we see the circuit design, you will understand how it looks. Okay, so A1 and A2 can be either transistors or operational amplifier or triple five IC, this A1 and A2. So in our lecture, we will use two stage NPN transistors based RC coupled uh, amplifier. So it means we will use two NPN transistors and then the RC coupling network to design this a stable multi vibrator. So our goal is 
generating non sinusoidal waveforms from this multi vibrator so remember a stable so we will use two stage rc coupled amplifier with coupling network and we need to give a positive feedback for the oscillation so whenever you give the positive feedback the output is in the not stable position uh, so positive feedback to generate the non sinusoidal waveforms and transistor remains in either state depending upon the time constant so as i mentioned here uh, so here for example this one right a stable multi vibrator the output is automatically changing from 1 to 0 and then 1 and then 0 like that so how long i said it can stay maybe for a few seconds how long it can stay in this logic one so it's really depending upon the r and c value r and c value that you are using in the coupling network so resistors and capacitors values okay so transistor remains in either state either logic one or logic zero depending upon the time constant uh, a stable it means there are two quasi states so we can also call this as a quasi or unstable or temporary states we can use different uh, words to explain or describe but it, it means just like this state is not stable it will change automatically so these are temporary states and there is no stable state okay that is why we call this as an unstable multi vibrator so now this is the circuit design of a stable multi vibrator so here first whenever you look at the circuit you have to look from two perspectives first one is how the circuit was built or how how the circuit was constructed how we connected different components the second one you have to look at is how this circuit is working so we have to apply some kind of signal imaginarily you have to imagine you are applying some inputs and then you are applying some power supply and what is going to happen in this circuit and then number three okay the first one is circuit construction the second one is circuit operation so maybe i can write it here operation means like you are applying some input or power supply and then you have to uh, simulate in your mind how it works and then third one is like a formulas so maybe each circuit we have some formulas it's depending upon the circuit operation or the circuit application and then of course we can also think like a little bit where we are going to use these circuits application the practical application of these circuits so you always remember this any circuit you study you have to think from different perspectives so first you have to see how the circuit was built and then how the circuit will work or the working principle or the operation of the circuit and what are the relevant formulas to the circuit of course you are not going to create any new formulas these formulas were already derived by the inventors but of course if you want to be a researcher in the future maybe you want to do phd or uh, master and phd then you can make some kind of modification in the circuit for example maybe you can add one more uh, ca capacitor or here you can add one more uh, transistor and you have to explain by adding this extra component what is the difference you are making in this circuit so that is why we call you as a researcher so you are just doing uh, adding some new components and maybe you can even change the function of this entire circuit totally so instead of producing like this maybe you produce something else totally the output at the output so then you can say that is your own circuit so you just even though if you introduce one new component and if you change the output into some for different purpose and you can apply this circuit the after you make some modification you can use this circuit in some application practical application then you can call this is your invention so that is how researchers are working and of course you can write some scientific papers about this one and you can publish in international conferences and journals so that is how the researchers are working so we are improving the existing design okay now this is the basic circuit design the one we are studying now in your bachelor level 
okay so you can think from these perspectives now we will see one by one what is the construction of this a stable multi vibrator first so what you are seeing here two transistors this is the transistor 1 q1 this is the transistor 2 q2 q1 and q2 are connected back to back you see here this is showing the back side of this transistor the base and then this is also showing the base and we are connecting this back to back even though they are identical they use different doping levels i already have this p and n p and n so if i add one more n here then this is called npn or bipolar junction transistor so i have the terminal here i have the terminal here i have the terminal here and this is called emitter and this is called a collector and this is called a base without applying the base voltage you cannot make the conduction between emitter and collector so when you apply the base voltage when it gets more and more uh, higher then you are melting this blockage the depletion layers so you are making the short circuit between the emitter and collector then you will have the current conduction but if the base voltage is less if if it's less than a uh, threshold voltage for example if i use the silicon based p type semiconductor i have the threshold voltage maybe 0.7 volt so if i apply the base voltage more than 0.7 volt yes then i make the short circuit between emitter and collector and then i may i make the current conduction but if it's more than 0.7 volt but if the base voltage is less than 0.7 volt it means less base voltage then this blockage is still there and the depletion layer is strong so you cannot make the current conduction so it means there is a open circuit between emitter and collector okay this is the basic principle that you have to remember in npn transistor so you are making either short circuit or open circuit based on this base voltage so this is a very very important concept okay this is called a device physics but we are not really after this one why i explain this here now because now we are going to use the principle here let us say now we are talking about the circuit construction right okay let us continue the circuit construction uh so q1 and q2 are connected in back to back q1 and q2 uh even though they are identical they are they are using different doping levels for example these two transistors i am using npn you can see the arrow mark towards outside so this is the base and this is the collector and this is the emitter right similarly here this is the base and this is the emitter and this is the collector i am not talking about common emitter or common base or common collector class a class b we don't care about those things now so let us say now we are uh, having this base collector and emitter and the emitter is grounded and both emitters got short circuited and then grounded okay now i said two transistors q1 and q2 are using two different doping levels it means they will not have same conditions at the same time instant so for example uh, this one have uh, maybe the using different doping level maybe it's uh, this is npn right so maybe n p n so i'm using n plus n plus p here so based on this one the depletion layer will be either because here we have the two depletion layer right two junctions so this is one junction and this is two second junction the depletion layer width will be different when you apply the voltage because here the voltage the electron carriers are very very strong here so if you even if you apply a small voltage then the current conduction will start between collector and emitter of course you have to apply the base voltage and this one is also this another q2 is also npn transistors npn maybe i use n minus n minus p so it what it means it means the number of electrons here is much much less because of n minus doping 
So even though I apply the same voltage, for example, if I apply five volt to this base and I apply the same plus five volt to this base here. So these transistors will not turn on at the same time. So maybe this one will turn on immediately, very fast. But this one may take a long time to, uh, maybe instead of five volt, maybe I need to give six volt or seven volt, or maybe it needs long time to melt the depletion layer. Because of this one, the depletion layer width is more stronger here because of N minus. So I need to, uh, even though I apply the same voltage at the same time, this will turn on first and this will turn on second. So that is the difference. That is what I am saying here. So we have, we are using two different doping levels in these two transistors. It means they will not have same conditions at the same time instant. So when we give this VCC, this is VCC, the supply voltage, both transistors will not be on at the same time. This is the, uh, the basic uh, idea you have to remember. So when, even though you apply this voltage, these two transistors will not turn on at the same time. Maybe Q1 will be on first and then the circuit element will play some role. Then we will turn on this Q2. We will see the operation now. Before that, we did not complete the circuit construction. So we have to look little more detail of the circuit construction now. Collectors, you see here, each, each transistor have three terminals, base, emitter, and collector. So collector of Q1 is connected to this VCC via RC1. And also collector of Q2 is connected to the VCC via RC2. And here we can, you can see R1 and R2, R2 and C2, R, sorry, R1, C1, R2, C2. R1, C1 is connected in the collector of Q1, or we can say collector of Q1 is connected to R1 and C1. Collector of Q2 is also connected to R2 and C2, then VCC. So you can see the circuit construction uh, in your mind. So here mainly this RC1, RC2. Uh, so you can see here, R1 is used to bias Q2, R2 is used to bias Q1. So this is just for a biasing purpose. These transistors, the voltage dividers or the transist these resistors are mainly helping to bias these transistors. And you can see here the junction point of, or the meeting point of R2C2, we are taking and connecting to the base of Q1. If you also, you can also say the collector of Q2, this is the collector of Q2 is connected to the base of Q1. Similarly, collector of Q1, this is the collector of Q1 is connected to the base of Q2. So this is the circuit. This is how we built the circuit or we designed the circuit. So this collector is driving the base of Q2 and this collector is driving the base of Q1. Of course, we have this R and C time constant elements, R1 and C1, R2, C2. And this RC2 and RC1 is also uh, acting like a potential divider and it's just helping to bias this transistor or keeping the bias stability of these transistors. And we know that each transistor is providing 180 degree phase shift. So totally we have 360 degree phase shift. So this is how the circuit is built or constructed. So we have the base and then we have the collector and connected to the power supply and the, all the uh, emitter of both transistors are connected to the ground. So we are done with the construction. Now we have to know how this circuit is working.